Hi, I'm Brennan from Waffles Community Robotics, and in this video we're going to talk about probably my two favorite blocks, the variable and the constant. Uh, they're found in the red or data operations palette. Uh, this is our the first two blocks that we're looking at right here. So, uh, before we get into how to use a variable block or a constant block, it's important for you to realize what they are. So the easiest one to explain is a constant block. Um, constants are constants, so they're they're one number or one letter or one true or false. It's just one thing that you set it to be, and it'll always be that. It's constant, as the name implies. Meanwhile, variables uh, they can change, so other blocks can interact with them and change what it's what the uh, variable holds. So uh, if you look at right here. The two pictures are actually quite useful for remembering what they are. So you see a constant has a, has a brief case with a, a lock on it. Basically, variables and constants are just names. Um, so picture a briefcase that's uh, named. And every time you want to open that briefcase, you just open it and you take out the information from it. You can read it or you can uh, change what's in it. So. Uh, a briefcase with a lock on it, you can't change what's in it. You can only you can only read it. So that's what the constant is. Um, you can set it, but once it's set, you can't change it. Meanwhile, a variable it doesn't have a lock on it. You can open it up a whole bunch of times, change it, read it, add to it, subtract from it, do whatever you want to do with it, uh, which is what all these other blocks are for. So. Now that we kind of know what a variable is, uh, what we can do is every variable has to have a name. So we're just going to call this variable variable. Uh, when you're actually using a variable block, use a useful name other than variable, uh, d depending on what your variable is being used. So if you're using your variable for uh, line following, say, uh, line following or if you can get more specific than that you could be like uh, percentage of light reflecting back uh, be as specific as possible because when you're going on further in your program it'll be uh, confusing if you're not sure what these variables are actually holding uh, the important thing the, another important thing to note um, is the variables are global for NXT or uh, EV3 unlike NXTG so what that means is you can have another program, so like, say I started another program over here, new program, and remember that variable that we put over here? You can still access it and get information from it, even though it's in a completely separate program. So unlike N NXTG couldn't do that, you'd have to have, they were all local variables, so what that means is it's all in one program. If you tried to open up a new program, you couldn't access information from it. So, there are a few settings on uh, variables. There's two main things, read and write. So, read's a book, write is a pencil. Really simple. Reading is looking at the information that's in the variable. So, opening up the briefcase and saying, oh, there's a number one in it. And then doing whatever what you want to do with that, that number. Writing is like uh, putting in something. So. Now I'm putting the one into the block, into the uh, briefcase, and then shutting it. That's what writing is. So if we look at read, all the read um, functions are basically just to output um, certain uh, data. It's not really um, doing anything uh, directly. You're just taking what it, whatever uh, is in the briefcase and then plugging it into another block in most cases. Uh, the other thing is important to note, you'll notice that our variable that we created over here, which if you remember is a number variable, because you can see the number and it's named variable, this is a text read. So you can't read a uh, numeric block with a text read block. If you want to read the numeric block, you have to go to the numeric. So all these are reads. 
basically it just reads whatever is in the variable and then displays or outputs the text or the numeric um, value or logic so a true or false statement depending on what the variable is set to at the current time and then arrays so uh, if you remember correctly from the wires um, lesson that we had earlier arrays hold multiple um, points of data within its wires so numeric array can hold multiple numbers logic array can hold uh, multiple true or false statements and we'll see how to use those later so write means that you can write uh, new information into the variable so if we go to text basically anything that's inputted in here you have let's make a variable actually let's just say the text variable oh, slash okay so anything inputted into here will be a text uh, format and then that variable will be uh, fit with that text so we can we or you can uh, just type in whatever so the initial variable or variable can be high and now high is in uh, the the uh, text uh, variable for text. Same thing goes for numeric. We can preset the uh, variable uh, variable that has uh, can have be like ten or something. So now this variable has ten in it. Logic, if you remember, is a true or false statement. So the let's make a logic variable and you can input either true or false or you can write from another block like I said all of these are inputs that we've looked at for the right blocks for the uh, right um, variable blocks so you can take uh, data from another uh, block which we'll look at later um, to uh, input whatever you want into these uh, variables So, the numeric array, you can see, look, you can add a whole bunch of things. So, you can add, uh, you can have four, seven, oops, zero, it's fine, and six. So, we've got four different numbers within this one um, variable, which we'll call numeric array. So now, when you read it, um, you'll see that you can read, you can choose which one you want to read. But all of them are passed through one wire, which we'll cover later in more detail in another video. So this is a logic array. And once again, you can add multiple true-false statements. So false, false, true, false. And you can see right here it's showing 0, 0, and that would be a 1. 1's true uh, in programming language, and 0 is false. That's kind of the standard. And that's pretty much the variable block um, just by itself. But by itself, it's not super useful. But you'll see in the next few videos when we look at these that it's crazy useful. And you can use it with uh, switches and loops and uh, sensor inputs can be plugged into your uh, variables so that they're easier to use and now the constant block so constant block is a uh, read only you uh, change whatever you want it to be so um, say it's a text you can you input your value once and then it's just an output. You can't interact any other way with it. You notice that there's no variable name because it doesn't need one because you're not going to be changing it later on in the program. It's just one number and you plug it into something. Or or a text value. So this remember text can be numbers too, but it won't be treated as math. It'll just be t treated as a character because 1 2 3 4 5 is characters. And you can do logic, 
so you can just have a true or false uh, being put in automatically there are some cases where you want to do this once again you can have a numeric array put in four numbers and it could be more than like a single digit number you could have some ridiculously long number e to the whatever totally unreadable though you know 9000 then you could have 9001 you could have 42, et cetera, et cetera. So that's variables and constants. You'll see how you can apply them um, in uh, using different uh, uh, blocks. So that both the uh, operations blocks and the uh, flow blocks are specifically useful. And when we get to my blocks, you're going to see how you can, using these blocks, these uh, variable blocks you can um, have inputs into your my blocks which is pretty cool so that's uh, variables